And the digital age is the result between interplay of technology, society, and guiding policy guidance that assures that technology is used for the intended purpose. So how can we think about the interplay among technology, society, and these kind of intervening, intervening guidance? Well, first of all, we need the technology that is the basic fundament on which the digital age is based on. And now digital technology can be separated and distinguished among very different layers and categories. There are at least seven of them. Keeping things simple, we just uh, distinguish between two of them. We basically distinguish between everything that is tangible and intangible. You can think about it like that. So the tangible infrastructure, this first infrastructure layer, refers to everything basically you can touch. That's all the hardware, the computer, the mobile phones, the, the cell phone towers, the modems, the cables, and so forth. And the generic the service layer then refers to software, things that you can, cannot necessarily touch. So these are the software, these are all the apps on your phone, email services, social networks, and so forth. So both hardware and software create uh, the technological fundament of the digital age. Then we also need the human component, capability, skills, and cultural change that uses, adapts, and applies this technology for our purposes. And now we put parts of the information and communication flows of different sectors of society into electronic networks. And that's why often people put this E in front. So it's e-government, e-business, e-health, and e-education when you have at least parts of the information and communication flows realized in electronic networks. And there are many other e-sectors. There is e-banking and e-science and e-security. Actually, this e we, our generation, we just use it as a placeholder. Future generations, they, they won't use the E anymore because they are used to this reality. For example, if I ask my little nephew where the government is, uh, he will point to an internet browser and says, well, there it is. He doesn't even consider that the government is in a capital city. It's, it obviously it is in the internet. So uh, for future generations, it will be completely natural. Just for our generation that is going through this transition, we use this placeholder and say, well, it's the e-government. So this is the necessary, but not the sufficient. We have the fundament, these horizontal layers, and we have these vertical sectors of social modernization. And now we need the third dimension. And the third dimension refers to these guiding interventions. There are two basic kinds of interventions that you can uh, have, that you can execute in a system such as social systems, this is positive and negative feedback. Positive feedback means you basically intend a kind of like runaway dynamic. You either like something a lot and, and you foster it or you don't like something and you try to eliminate it. And negative feedback just means there is something going on in the system that you like, but not too much, not too little. You try to stabilize it. So we will talk about this more. These are the two basic things that you can do to intervene in a systems dynamic and, and then guide it. So as a result, we have this three-dimensional uh, perspective on society between technology, basically, society, and intervening uh, guidance policies. You can also think about it this way. You have what you have up here is the development of ICT and the development of the required human resources to make use of ICT. Then what you have down here is ICT for development, for human development, for modernization, for, for progress, for increase of efficiency, transparency, whatever you want. And on the third side, you have, well, policy instruments. You have guidance, you intervene in order to assure that the development of ICT also fulfills the purpose that you have in mind for human development and social modernization. I initially developed this queue while I was working as the coordinator of the Information Society program of the Secretariat of the United Nations. 
in Latin America and the Caribbean. And, and I developed the cube basically out of a frustration because back in the days, in the early 2000s, I was hanging out at a lot of conferences and I listened to this discussion and it, it was quite frustrating because the discussion always went in full circle. So somebody would start saying, well, what we need for the digital age is we need to assure that there's enough technology. We need to provide access because without access to the technology, we cannot even get off the ground. Somebody else would say, no, 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 what's much more important is that we need to train the people because if they don't know how to use this technology, they don't have skill, nothing makes sense. A third person would say, no, no, what really matters is we have to have an end in mind. The end comes first. So uh, do we want to do this digitalization thing because we want to increase the productivity of our economy? or because we want to introduce transparency in the public sector. And then a fourth person would say, well, no, what we need, first of all, is to elaborate a legislative framework, for example, privacy protection. Without that, nobody would even get online. And, and then the first person would say again, no, but without the technology, why would you want to have a, a legislative framework? We first need to provide. And so it went full circle and full circle. And the truth is, yes, all of these aspects do matter. And they're actually interdependent one upon the other. So actually then sitting there, I started to draw out this three-dimensional framework. And I've been using it ever since to think about it. It helps me a lot to think about it. And we also used it to work with governments. Several governments have used this framework to design their national policy agenda and also the first generation of the Intergovernmental Action Plan for Digital Development in Latin America which has been signed by, by 30 governments, uh, uses this CUBE framework as a reference of how to structure the Digital Development Action Plan. So it is quite useful. And during the course, we will basically work with this three-dimensional framework. One of the benefits of the CUBE as a reference framework is that you can take it apart and play with it. For example, you can only look at the infrastructure layer and ask about the installation of broadband, for example. Or you can only look at the e-government sector and then you can ask about what kind of specific infrastructure do you need for e-government development? What kind of apps and generic services have to be developed? And what are the skills that people and government officials need to have? And are there some policies policies through positive or negative feedback that you can use to implement and foster e-government development. You can also zoom in to one very specific challenge, for example, to create incentives for ICT infrastructure development in local e-government, for example, connectivity in municipalities. So you kind of like look at one specific intersections of these three basic dimensions. Or you can look at a cross-cutting intersection. For example, you ask about regulation and, and legislation for all kind of generic services, for all kind of apps that affect all kind of e-sectors. For example, privacy legislation. That will affect e-business, but also e-health and also e-government. So, so here we have a cross-cutting topic. So what we will do during this course is we will take the cube apart, look at different aspects of it, and then put it back together again.